And similar to what's happening in the UK, that they have to issue a ton more debt the treasury expects to borrow 550 billion in the fourth quarter, which is 150 billion higher than they estimated just a couple of months ago in August. Now, is that extra money to buy back treasury debt and to create liquidity in the markets? Because on the other hand, what's also happening with the Fed raising rates, that's like putting the brakes on the economy because this is a debt-based economy, right? So raising rates, fewer people borrow and spend, that's putting the brakes on the economy. With the treasury, when they borrow 550 billion in this quarter or whatever they're going to borrow, that's creating new money and it stimulates the economy. So essentially you're having your foot on the brakes and the gas pedal at the same time that is schizophrenic, that is dysfunctional. And what does that do? It creates more volatility and more crisis. And it represents the biggest systemic risk to stocks and everything else since the 2007 housing bubble. But this is much, much bigger, much bigger because the US housing market didn't underpin the global financial system, but the 10 year treasury note does. If the treasury market fails to trade for a period of time, it is likely that the various credit channels, including corporate, household, and government borrowing in securities and loans would cease. Yeah, it would just stop, stop just that fast. This could lead to events such as a U.S. government default if auctions do not proceed because this is based on constantly creating more debt, more new money. We are at the end of this road. We are at the end of this currency experiments life cycle. I know that it's hard to conceive if the spillover impact of uh, the spillover impacts to the dollar, equity markets, emerging markets, consumer and business <laughs> confidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when you stop and think that this is a con game and con games require confidence and what helps us create and support this is full faith and credit. So confidence. Can you see how this leads into hyperinflation? Because that's really the next step. Will the Fed pivot when this market starts to implode if the treasury market can't support it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they will make what they did, oh, I'm not gonna do that to poor Edgar, but they will make what, they did in 2020 look like chump change, just like what they did in 2020 made what they did in 2008 that was so incredibly shocking look like chump change. And that confidence is holding on by a thread. So if you think that that's going to enable anybody to hit that 2% inflation target, which is just the level at which you don't notice inflation, Think again, because that level of printing will do a whole lot more than that. But I think it's also really important that you see when the treasury market was taken over or handed to traders. This is TYVIX, the 10 year treasury price volatility. Okay. And you can see early on, 2000, they started doing, uh, tracking this in 2003 to 2008, what you have are dashes, right? And that means that the price didn't change very much in the course of a day. And frankly, with the foundation, isn't that what you want? But in 2008, the system died and it went on QE heroin life support. So those dashes in price movement became up and down lines. Just a little bit though, not huge, right? 
But look at what happened back in 2013, handed over to traders. If this were an EKG, would you say that they're having a crisis? Would you say that the patient is dying? Yes. So what was the end result of that? Well, they just stopped publishing it, went away, gone, right? So I can't tell you what it looks like today, but my guess is even worse than since 2013. This is the volatility. That's the price action of treasuries. That is not what you want a foundation to look like. And can you see exactly when they took over? Because I think it's pretty obvious from this graph. That's why I like it so much. I just wish that they kept, kept it up so we could see what it looks like today. But what's going on in the rest of the world is an indication. And of course, investors, meaning Wall Street, urges U.S. Treasury to boost that bond market liquidity with that buyback scheme. Well, of course they want you to boost that liquidity. It's Wall Street. They've created all these products on it. And yet look at these record losses in drawdown. I'm going to explain drawdown in just a second. But first of all, what you're looking at here is a total return of U.S. Treasuries, which is the income, so the dividends that the Treasuries pay, or the interest, rather, that the Treasuries pay, plus price appreciation, right? Remember, when interest rates go down, as the Fed was pushing them down, what happened to the principal? right? It went up. So that's price appreciation. But look at this, what's happening right now. Treasuries are experiencing a record drawdown. So what's a drawdown? That's selling. Okay. They just don't want you to realize what's going on. And I'd like you to take a look at what that drawdown treasury selling looked like between 1975 or 1971 when it started and today, because I can't tell you the exact moment that this paper-based fiat market ends, but I can tell you we are close. We are very, very close. And if the treasury market freezes, that's it. It's done. And I'm heading up to my bug out location and I'm not kidding. I'm being dead serious about that. I am not joking because that's where they're selling to. And this was just as of what? October 26th, okay? That's the lowest that we've ever seen inside of selling of treasuries. And that was during the transition to this debt-based system. 